Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Psalm TV podcast. My name is Jason Wise. On today's episode, I am speaking with a person many call the Neil Diamond of the wine business. This is the head wine writer for Food and Wine magazine, my dear friend Ray Isle. And uh, he's got a silky smooth voice. It's been the it's the first time to have him on. I wanted to do something really interesting with him. There is this concept of noble grapes. These are the like king grapes, the most important grapes, and they were sort of come up with and they haven't changed. So I wanted to get Ray Isle on the pod and I wanted to take a modern look at if we were going to expand the concept of noble grapes, what should be in, what should be out. Ray and I are going to litigate who should be kicked out of these grapes and who shouldn't be. And I'm sure this is going to generate a lot of responses from you guys who are uh, big uh, noble grape heads, if that's a thing. <laughs> Today's episode is sponsored by Som TV. Go to somtv.com and subscribe. It's $49.99 for an entire year. Hundreds and hundreds of hours of shows. We have new stuff up all the time, new drink a bottle episodes, and all sorts of things. We have Guys, we have some incredible announcements coming. I'm like dying to tell you what we're about to say, but I'm not allowed. And the minute I can, I will, I promise. Go to somtv.com and stream us on any device that you watch your shows on. Without further ado, the beautiful Ray Isle of Food and Wine Magazine. Ray, it's great to have you on the uh, Som TV pod. I, I don't I don't think you've ever been on the podcast. Is this correct? I have not. This is the first time. Your entire life has led up to this moment. I, it a, has. I've been I've been waiting for you guys to ask me, so I, I'm 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 thrilled, <laughs> and, and now I'm done. I, I've got nothing to do after this. After this, it's like winning your fifth NBA championship. It's over. You don't have anything else you can do. <laughs> You're like Bill Walton. So you and I didn't see. We haven't seen each other since uh, Food and Wine Classic in Aspen. You're both like a face of Food and Wine, but you're also behind the scenes very much. I don't know anybody who works harder than you. You seem to be everywhere. I do a lot of food and wine. Um, I mean, because I do a lot of, of speaking at events and so on, but I also, I, I mean, essentially oversee the wine coverage, which means writing quite a bit and also then assigning stories and editing stories and and then writing for so, somewhat connected writing for travel and leisure as well. So yeah, I, I seem to keep relatively busy. <laughs> it's, you know. I would say that I'm convinced that there are actually two of you and you just are keeping a really good Really good. Your brother, your twin brother, is you're yeah, keeping that evil hidden twin. as a secret. Yeah, your evil yeah. twin, something like that. You're the nicest person in wine. So I want to talk about a bunch of stuff. Mainly, I'm obsessed with this concept of noble grapes. So these are the grapes that were like named to be the noble grapes. The what? Are they, what is it supposed to be? The most important. The the most mm, classic. I think it's a that, term that we hear and read about, and they're like the thing. Yeah. So what does it What does it mean? Well, I think it, it traditionally meant that the noble grapes were, in theory, the ones that had the capacity to produce really great wine, as opposed to just good wine. You know that they were uh, the. You know, if you if you wanted to pick the original noble grapes, you know, um, it's it's pretty much all French except for Riesling. Even Riesling does grow in France, but you know. Well, we should go through. We should go through them. We should go through like what they are really quick. So the concept of the noble grape. There's six of them currently. I don't know how we get another one into the into the class here, but let's go through them. <laughs> All right, so, Ray, what, yeah. Ray what, what are they? Well, so the original list of noble grapes would be Cabernet Sauvignon, Pinot Noir, Merlot, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, and Riesling. So nicely, three three white grapes, three red grapes. Um, you know, you've got your you've got your Bordeaux varieties, you've got your Burgundy varieties, and you've got Riesling hanging out there. Um, you know, I, I don't actually know without looking it up the origin point, but I, I, you know, it, it it feels a bit to me like it probably came out of the British wine trade. Well, the Brits have done this when they moved into India. They had the noble races and the martial races, and <laughs> yeah. this yeah. is something they categorize and they pick. And I, you know, look, I, I don't want to throw all the Brits under the bus. We all have our issues, but there is a categorization that they tend to do, or oh, historically yeah. have tended to do. And yeah, no, and and it's no difference. you know it simplifies things for people. That's that's you know in the same way that a, a number system for rating wine simplifies things. It 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 breaks down a complex world into simple categories. And you know I think that probably historically at that time the noble grapes were you know if you look at the, at the you know, Bordeaux, Burgundy, and German Riesling, those are some of the great wines in the world. And they were certainly sure. the commercially the most prevalent wines in the world. And sort of fine wine trade starts out of, you know, wines of France. Um, it's interesting, you know, the if you were going to say, like, what's a revised version of the noble grapes, you know, the first people beating at the door would have been Italian varieties, you know. It, sure. It, you know, the, the idea to me that 
that Nebbiolo somehow is not a noble grape when it produces Barolo and Barbaresco and and literally the tagline for Barolo was, you know, at one point was the wine of the king of wines and the wine of kings or vice versa. It's like, well, I mean, how, did, how much more noble than a king do you get? <laughs> it's like super, <laughs> super duper king, you know, big time king. Super, um, super duper king. king, yes. So, you know, I, I think it's kind of an outdated, you know, well, it is an outdated structure of, of how to look at wine. Um, there's too much at this point going on that's too interesting and too ambitious outside of those realms to simply say those six grapes are the, you know, the noble ones and everybody else is sort of common and common or peasant like. I want to play a little, uh, a little, a little uh, game here. Sure. My opinion is it should be six. Let's, you have to keep it regimented. You have to keep a canvas here, but I think it should be, let's call it six reds and six whites. All right. Right. Instead of these three whites and three reds that are in here, which are basically all French. I mean, Alsace has gone back and forth, but you can call Riesling a French grape if you want to, if you want to fib. And say it didn't come from Germany or whatever. <laughs> so basically, political football. It got to cut <laughs> yeah, right. It doesn't matter. from side to side. Holy Roman Empire. We're fine. We're in the zone. All right. So if we were going to say six, and you have to have six reds and six whites, and these are the noble grapes, and we're going to teach these in classes for the next 75 years, and we're all going to put on nice school, school outfits, and this is going to be it. All right. Would you remove any of the reds or whites in this from that are on this list? Pinot, Merlot, Cab, Sauvignon. You know what I, what I do like, initially is try. say, what's your criteria? Um, because, My criteria is you are one of the smartest people in wine. You've got b- brilliant facial hair at the moment. <laughs> I would say that you have been in the wine trade and you know you know this better than anybody. You have a good gut. You're also very democratic. That's your criteria. I'm asking you to pick historically, importance, taste. These are the ones that deserve to sit there. Well, see, that's that's where it gets complicated for me because this is a really interesting question. So this is where it gets to be an interesting question. It's not an easy answer because do you because uh, what you have to ask yourself before you make a categorization like that are you talking about the the quote unquote quality of the wine that the grape produces? Are you talking about the historic you know um, significance of the grape? Are you talking about like how popular it is in the market? Well, if I if I were to ask you, if I were to ask you, you have. 10 American films that are the most important that have ever been made. And I threw out the Godfather and Citizen Kane. Would you say those are probably on the list? You're not yeah, a filmmaker. Probably you're probably not on the list. Okay, yeah. great. I think but they're not the most that. popular. That's not, but that's not what I'm asking. Okay. Well, but I would factor say, it in, but I would factor yeah. it in. I would still say yeah. it's a factor. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd have to put, I'd have to put, I mean, you know, subject to anybody wanting to disagree with me, feel free. But I would have to say that the six that are in the kind of original run, down probably should be in there. I personally don't love Sauvignon Blanc. I'm waiting for the Sauvignon Blanc that makes my you know toes curl in the right way. But it You've uh, never had the eight the nine hundred dollar uh, screaming eagle Sauv Blanc. I have I had not. it. I, 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 I had it. You know, it's still Sauvignon. I mean, you, know, you can charge nine hundred bucks for it or fifteen bucks. It's still Sauvignon Blanc. You didn't have to have a cigarette afterwards. Your toes no, curl. I properly. really didn't. I I okay. was uh, it was you know I I you know or Catsatelli does more for me. Um, that doesn't mean you can't write about it. I and plenty of people like it. And and I have had some Sauvignon Blancs that I like, but it's just not my favorite grape. But as, at the same time, I don't think you could dis to you could remove it from the list. I think you'd have to. The question is like, where do you go from there? You, do you put in? Um, you put in Sangiovese. I think you kind of have to put in Sangiovese. Well, all right. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take these three that we have. I'm going to write them down on a list. And then you and I are going to name some other lists or some other wines. I'm going to write them down. And then we're going to hack them out until we get to six and six. <laughs> there can okay. only be, this is like American Gladiator here. This is, yeah. yeah this remember is, that like, show? Did like, you ever watch that show? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, <laughs> yeah. I know how it works. It's, it's, it's more or less <laughs> okay. like actual gladiators with just without death. Um. Well, you know, I, I hate to, I hate to tell you, but there's a chance, a very slim chance that we may have to kill your Carignan. I know you're a big fan. Uh, yeah, so, I know. I, I like Carignan, but well, let's say, so let's, <laughs> in our kind of hypothetical, what might go into this list? Um, uh-huh. I think, I think we got to put in Sangiovese and, and Nebbiolo. I would say let's put in Tempranillo. Um, huh? Let's let's see what do we got on there? We got Riesling. Oh, I would I would make a, I would make an argue in the re, an argument in the Reds because right now that's six and I think that would sit really nicely. But yeah, but we just left does out Grenache, Grenache. Garnacha. Yeah. That's what I see. I was going to say yeah. I think Grenache has a real strong argument. It is it is you know there. I mean, it, you have one bottle of Chateau Reyes and you <laughs> you may be convinced forever that Grenache should be in there. I um, mean, that's uh, that's so that now, now we're at seven. So one of those has to die. Now who has but to I die? Do, and but but I would I would also ask: Is there no other reds that deserve to be in here? You wouldn't put Beaujolais, Gamay. I mean, you Gamay. wouldn't put Gamay. Eh. No. Okay. Eh. I mean, All right. Okay. Eh. 
I love Gamay. I think I love Beaujolais. I'm not sure. I what about I Syrah? Would... You look like yeah. A Syrah well, Syrah guy actually, to me. Syrah has to be in there. I think you got to put Syrah in there. Okay, now we uh, have eight. I knew this yeah. was going to get fun. Yeah, I mean is, Syrah to me. If you, I, I would say if you're going to put Nebbiolo in, Syrah should be standing there yelling. Why not yeah. me? Well, maybe you cut Merlot. Ooh. Well, we're not, let's not do any cuts yet. This is good. No, I love this. <laughs> I want to get through the reds really quick. Any other reds besides Grenache, Syrah, Tempranillo, Nebbiolo, Sangiovese, Pinot Noir, Merlot, Cab? Do you got anything else? What have we left out? I mean, we've left out Zinfandel. Ooh. I mean, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, Carol mm-hmm. Meredith over there with her Triba Drag yeah. and – and um, uh, probably the Martinelli's and definitely the guys over at Zinn or over at Ridge Vineyards would be pretty upset to not see Zinn. Uh, let's, should we pencil in Zinfandel just in case? Yeah, put it pencil in Zinfandel. What the hell? Okay. okay. Um, we left out Trousseau. Trousseau. Now that's some, I think, borderline hipster amazing wine that I think deserves to be there. But you're going to have to make an argument. To We left out, we have to out Agio Gitico. You're going to go Greek wines. Okay. <laughs> No Zeno Mavro? You're going to go. Yeah, I'm just, we're going to put Zeno Mavro in there too. We might as well. I mean, as I mean, long as we're looking at history, we got to put Saparavi in. It's been made in Georgia for, you know, 8,000 years. I have a very strong feeling that poor Zaparavi, Zaparavi is not going to make it to the Noble Grapes just based Probably on. Probably going to get cut. It, admittedly, it's not enough of it around for us to really, you know, put this one in. That's a long list we got there. Okay. So here's, here's what I have in our reds Cab, Merlot, Pinot Noir, Sangiovese, Nebbiolo, Tempranillo. Grenache, 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 Syrah, Zinfandel, and Trousseau. So somewhere <laughs> <laughs> we got to get down to what? To six? We got to get down to six. Six okay. reds, six whites. Do you want to go to the whites, or you got any more reds you want to no, throw let's, in? Let's deal with the reds. Okay. So wait, do we right. cut cut first? Yeah, let's no, cut. let's let's cut first. All right, so okay. we're gonna go with the reds. I, Trousseau's I, out. I, I mean, I was cutting Trousseau's joking. out. I agree with you. Trousseau is out, which leaves us with. Zinfandel, uh, Syrah, Grenache, Tempranillo, Nebbiolo, Sangiovese, Pinot, Merlot, Cab. You agree that Pinot, Merlot, Cab, they stay. We know, we're not going to touch my, them. Are you thinking I'm about sure, Merlot? Jury's sure out on Merlot. Okay, um, Merlot, I'm going to mark that. I mean, I, I would pull Zinfandel out. I think it's, okay. I, I love, I mean, there are Zinfandels I love. Um, I don't think for my taste, broadly, the greatest Zinfandels I've tasted have not been up to the greatest Pinot Noirs or Cabernets, let's say. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I it, it pains me to cut Zinfandel because I've fallen in love with it due to due to filming and the things and the people I've met, but yeah. I, I agree with you. Um the you history of Zinfandel in America and such is really important, but Zinfandel's gotta go. Zinfandel's got so, a great story. So what does that leave us with? It leaves us with two Rhone wines, Grenache, or I mean you could say Spanish or whatever, Grenache, Syrah, Tempranillo, Nebbiolo, Sangiovese, Pinot Noir, Cab, and Merlot. So that leaves us with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You got to cut two of these. Now, would you, would you lose? I mean, I feel like Tempranillo, it is almost criminal to not have Tempranillo. A grape that produces some of the absolute greatest reds in the world. And they all come from Spain. And some of them are, you know, not appreciated as much as they should be. But some of them are very expensive. And some of them are great. Tempranillo is an amazing grape. Uh, Sangiovese can be an amazing grape. Um, I mean, if I have I, to it's pick, hard to see Sangiovese go too. I mean, geez, Brunello Montalcino, see. none of that. You get no Brunello in here. Yeah, but you get no you Rioja, get no Chianti. Well, Rioja yeah. is. I'm a I'm a big fan of Rioja. That's a yeah. that's tricky. So if you could you drink Brunello, Rioja for the rest of your life versus Brunello? If you had to uh, give up Brunello, could you drink the best Rioja for the rest of your life? Oh, I could drink that? Rioja over. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, I mean, that, yeah, that, that's your but that's right me. There for you. I, I have a love asking, of old real hot, so I'm asking you. I mean, that you are yeah. the most you're the most important guy in wine, as we um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I'm, that was a, that was a completely unbelievable but, besides, but delightful bes- that you said it. Besides, apparently, LeBron James, I mean, this you're, you're yeah. maybe like just, just above him. As yeah, far as your well, I'm way, goes. I'm actually way, way shorter than he is, so I'm in no way above LeBron James. <laughs> okay, fair. I do like just as a side, I do like the photo of you at Aspen Food and Wine with all the NBA players, <laughs> and your caption was, "Who's getting picked last in the, in the well, pickup it was game?" <laughs> particularly comical because our editor in chief and the CEO of our company that owns Food and Wine are both like six three as well. So I'm, I'm sitting there like the, you know, the dwarf human among all these. You know, that, uh, that may be extremely tall. It was people. very, very funny. I was All feeling right, so very you, much, you know, like San Giovese. <laughs> <laughs> you're feeling San Giovese right here, about to get cut. You have so much history. You're important to an entire country. Sorry. Yeah, um, sorry. You're but out. That would be, 
So Sangiovese, so basically it looks like to me you're picking one Italian red to be in here. It's either Nebbiolo or Sangiovese. That's what I'm doing. And I'm going to, sh- I'm going to be, sh- I mean, it's, it's kind of a weird, it's very hard to cut Merlot because it's, I don't know how you, I guess you just kind of cut the, the, the left bank of Bordeaux and keep the right bank. But I'm kind of <laughs> tempted to cut Merlot. If I cut Merlot and Sangiovese, I'm done six, right? If you cut Sangiovese and Merlot, you're there. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, that's pretty awesome. I, I think, you know, I feel bad because Merlot seems to be both fairly and vastly unfairly maligned um, oh, yeah. for reasons that I'm tired of talking about sideways. But <laughs> but <laughs> I'm just tired of it. You know, it's a grape that – look, it's not – I mean, Merlot is not um, – is this, is this blasphemy to say it's not the most complex grape on earth? It can be wonderful. It can be, but it's not the most. It's not Nebbiolo for sure. It's, you know, it's as with all these grapes, individual expression is, is Merlot the most expressive complex grape on earth? No, until someone hands you a glass of Petrus. That's fair. That's fair. You know, and then you're kind of like, eh, it's pretty damn expressive. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> impressive grape. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. But, it's on you my know, tax bracket often, but I try I, to drink I also kind of feel like, Eh, one Bordeaux grape is enough. You know, let's let's mm-hmm. one Bordeaux red grape is enough. Let's let's okay, not so that you know, overdo us, it on the Bordeaux. Officially, that leaves us changing the noble red grapes to Cabernet, Pinot Noir, Nebbiolo, Tempranillo. You left Grenache. Oh shit! I forgot yeah. Grenache. Sorry, I don't even know if I can say shit on this podcast. You can say you shit me. all day long. Yeah, uh, we totally forgot about Grenache. So um, Grenache is in there with Syrah. That means you have two Rhone varietals. Yep. And mm. I mean, Grenache also gives you, and, and also technically kind of too Spanish. I mean, I know Grenache is Southern France, and but it's widely in Spain. Well, there's an, there's an argument in, in that I'd like to have represent multiple countries. There's an argument we could keep Grenache and get rid of Tempranillo. Um, Interesting. Kind of, but I don't want to cut, I definitely don't want to cut Cabernet, Pinot, or Syrah. But I mean, we're at six right now. You just, you're basically adding back Sangiovese or Merlot to get rid of Grenache. Or oh, Trousseau, wait, we've got, Gren- I, we've got Grenache in the yeah. six? Oh, yeah. Cool. Grenache is in the okay. six. We're done. So Grenache good. stays. Yeah. I know some people who would be very happy with this list. Cab. So here's our here's our official. Merlot is out. Merlot, original, an original noble grape. Booted Life's out. Life's hard. One movie and you're Ca- toast. A- above the fold <laughs> in the New York Times tomorrow morning. This is a huge yeah. deal. Cabernet, Merlot, Pinot Noir. No, Merlot's nope, out. Cabernet, Cabernet, yep. Pinot Noir, Nebbiolo, Tempranillo, Grenache, and Syrah. Okay. I mean, that's like, yeah. you put those all together, that's the prisoner, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, that, 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 that explains why they're noble. <laughs> it's like the Count of Monte Cristo. The guy was listed in jail forever. Um, that's right. There it is. Uh, okay, okay. Now, is white easier or harder for you? I mean, obviously, I... Hey, white's going to be harder because I, I I feel like there's less exciting options. But let's let's go through what we've got. Well, right now, we got Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, Sauvignon Blanc. Chard, Riesling. Okay. What else do you got to throw in there? For my money, um, God, it's tough because a lot of these whites I'm just like deeply in love with, and I'm not sure if they are as important as I think they are. Mm-hmm. Um, well, let's think. Let's let's go to Spain, Northwest Spain. Do you think right. there are Albarino. any grapes up there that are is Albarino worth going in this list? Probably uh, not, right? I mean, I I love Albarino. I think there's some fantastic wines. I don't think it's it. I think the it seems so hard to place it as kind of like one of the great noble. Well, then if that's not going in there, time. Godeo's not going in there. So Yeah, Godeo's a tough to like, like, There's a lot of yeah. obscure... Oh, Chenin Blanc is left out. We should put Chenin Blanc All in. All right. I knew you were going to go to Chenin. Yeah, we got to get the Chenin Blanc in there. Chenin's easy. We're at four. We need six. Okay. That's easy. What about a Sirtico? What about any Greek wines? What about something... Uh, part of the problem is that I, uh, that I have is that for me, a Sirtico, Vermentino, Albarino, there's, there's a kind of cluster or constellation of grapes that are coastal similar in character make distinctive wines but none of them stand out in such a way that they from each other in such a way that i want to pull one of them out of the mix and say it's the noble one and the others aren't what about pinot grigio well if there weren't such an ocean of god-awful pinot grigio i'd be more tempted yeah you 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 do have an argument there what else have we got there uh i mean there's like pinot blanc i'm not i don't know that it makes a ton of sense there's things that would be an alsace like uh muscat well there's there's marsan and Roussan. Which, to my mind, typically are you know, blended. B- yeah, work their best in blends. Um, yeah, often blended with red wine, strangely. But yeah, what about Viognier? Which Shakira Jones, I can hear her laughing and saying, "You put that on the list, and I will 
pu- punch you in the face, but we had a whole <laughs> podcast where I tried to defend Viognier and I lost. Uh, horribly, I mean, but I, whatever. Shakira has got a point. Again, it's one of those problematic grapes <laughs> where there's 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 a lot of big, flabby, not so interesting Viognier, yeah. and then a couple of spectacular wines. Um, you know, let me think who else is out there. All the weird, you know, oddballs like Chasselas or you know Muller Turgau. Yeah, that would be another Loire, or not Loire. That would be another Alsace. You find Chasselas. You know, I guess you could make an argument for Pinot Gris slash Pinot Grigio. Every every sommelier who's ever taken an exam listening to this right now is like, "How dare you? Do not put this like this." They're very hard to blind taste. You know, do we have to have six? We don't have to, but I think that we have to be able to find six grapes that are white that deserve to be. Don't you think? I mean, I mean, what about Semillon? No. I mean, Semillon is basically goes with goes with Sauv Blanc to make. Well, Sauv Blanc is I mean, so. the only varietal, sort of the most exciting varietal Semillons are Hunter Valley in Australia for me, which are are gorgeous wines, but but a minimal presence in the world. And you know, I wish they were around more. And they take fifteen years to really become cool. So maybe the whites aren't this hard. Maybe we think about whites and we think like, look, Chablis is just Chardonnay, and 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 Champagne is a lot of Chardonnay, and. I mean, so a lot of there's a lot of variety that's made from these. I mean, the stuff you can do with Chenin Blanc from a standpoint of how deep that can go back and forth, that's a gimme. You, you Chenin definitely needs to be in there. Um, but you, you have no Italian grapes. What about Verdicchio? No? I like it. Uh, what about Arnais? No Italian whites? Going Verdicchio, this? Arnais, Fermentino. Um, Fermentino, yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> I mean, I would make a strong argument. I really like a Certico, the Greek grape, but I also know that it's so dependent on the producer. It can yep. be very thin. It can be very good. It can be very cheap in some cases. Also, sometimes when you're in Santorini, you would drink kangaroo pee and it would be amazing <laughs> <laughs> because you're in Santorini. So, like, I, I don't I don't know. It's uh, tough. It's a tough. Uh, yeah. yeah I, feel, I, I thought white was going to be much more complicated than this. I mean, what about an oddball choice, you know? Is it is is Palomino a noble grape? Because there's uh, absolutely great, great absolutely great because sherry, sherry absolutely yeah. I'm I'm fighting for Palomino. Okay. And I know somebody like Raj Parr would say, I mean, they make Palomino out of these old ass vines here in California, and he's like a mm-hmm. lover of Palomino. I yes, it's, it's, I think it deserves to be in there. Hundred yeah, percent. That's that's a bit, that'd be a fun one to throw in. I mean, it's it's All an interesting, sherry. It's an interesting except choice for Pedro Jimenez. Yeah, Pedro Jimenez. I can't stand Pedro Jimenez. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I just turned on a technicality. <laughs> <laughs> it's too sweet. It's too sweet. Yeah, it's way too. It's very sweet. What about Gewurz? Don't you think Gewurz Terminer? It's like an ancient grape. You don't think that deserves mm-hmm. to be in this list? We got five right now. Uh, you, know, you know. Okay. I, I have a love hate relationship with Gewurz Terminer. Y- you know what I think Gewurz Terminer is like for me? It's like a gym membership. I'm really glad I have it, but I never use it. I think that I'm is glad it very exists. Good. That's a very. Uh, apt and accurate way of describing converts. <laughs> I, it's, I just oh God, think, it, poor, I mean, as, and this is like going to get me killed by everybody in Alsace, but I, I, I do think it's one of those grapes that like, how often do you actually pull it out and drink it when you have it in your cellar? Mm, very rarely. Somebody has sausages and they're like, Hey, have you ever had sausage with this? And then you're like, Oh, that's good. You know, but it's really not. What about Pinot Blanc? Can I get a bone on Pinot Blanc? If you're at Turlana, no, I think it's Pinot Blanc, some, I, I think it's too minor. I think you'd have to go okay. Pinot Gris over Pinot Blanc. Okay. Um, I mean, right now, Pinot Grigio, you have it on the list. And if we if we put it on the if we put it on the list, that's six. But I have a feeling people listening would be like, how dare you? On the six noble whites? Put it on the list as Pinot Gris instead of Pinot Grigio. Oh, then we're fancy. Okay. Yeah, because it's French now. So it sounds fancier. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Poor there are some wine, there are some winemakers, especially in like Alto Adige, that make some good stuff. Yeah, but then it's like I look at Roussan and I'm like, what well, how do we leave out Roussan? Um, well, I mean, Chateau Beaucastle, they do great pure Roussan, yeah. like great. Yeah. It's truly so, magical, but it's a big blending gla- grape. Would you take root? Ru- yeah. I mean, it's like Roussan and Marsan are so close to each other. God, it's tough. Muscat, it's pretty simple. That's yeah, it's a, pretty simple. can be a great table wine. What about, see, it's like the grapes that go into port and go into Madeira. They're not, it's, it's not like, it's not like Palomino that goes into Sherry. It's not like right. that. There's, there's too many things. Too many components. The, the question with with the question with Palomino is because you know when you look at sherry, the question is: is it the grape or is it process? Um, you know, and, and it's hard to say that it's Palomino that makes sherry so amazing. Mm. But because this entire but it is Palomino, yeah, uh, because this entire thing is kind of insane. <laughs> it just doesn't really matter. Yeah, I that's mean, true. What what about Gruner? Gruner Veltliner? Any, any oh, Austrian? Gruner. Well, Gruner's. Yeah, I, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, let's throw Gruner in there. What the Gruner's hell? Gruner's the last one that I'm I'm like kind of like 
all the all the Greeks, all the uh, everybody from the uh, the truly old country are very upset with us that we're not putting in what is Chateau Moussard's white. They're upset. Obadiah, um, I think. <laughs> Obadiah, is, yeah, that's yeah. right. There's nobody um, I can have this pod who would know that on yeah. top of their head, but you. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, I really applaud everybody who's still here. We are we are doing the Lord's work here, redefining <laughs> yes, the noble are. grapes from the perspective of two uh, white men. Okay. Yeah, because two, yeah, two guys are just going to be, you know, who don't even believe in what they're doing necessarily. <laughs> you, you, can, you can find Ray Isle on Twitter and Instagram, and I would like you to at him nonstop about this with your yeah. disagreements. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, here's what you have. Here's what you have. I think we're, we're closing in. We have, we're keeping the original three, Sauv Blanc, Chardonnay, Riesling. We have Chenin Blanc, Palomino, Pinot Gris, Gruner. So you got to get rid of one of one of Chenin, Palomino, Pinot Gris, and Gruner. Which would you get rid of? You're not adding Silvaner on me. In terms of it being a noble grape, I think you have to get rid of Palomino because I think that so much of sherry is the process that that you can't actually say it's the grape that is the entirely responsible. Spain almost had one in here. They were so close. Yeah, that would leave us with Sauv Blanc, Chardonnay, Riesling, Chenin, Pinot Gris, Gruner, Veltliner. As the new six, can you live with that? Yeah, uh, I can live with it. <laughs> I'm entirely thrilled with it, but I can live with it. If I gotta have six, <laughs> I'll do it. You know, <laughs> I love that you're like, let's cut it to four. <laughs> it's like it's, I thought white was going to be harder, but I guess it makes sense that white is often you know there's a lot of blending, and when it's yeah. interesting, this is interesting. All right, so I'm just going to recap. Actually, I, uh, I mean, I'm doing a last minute change. I'm doing a last okay. minute substitution in play. Okay. Um, take out Pinot Gris and put it in Roussan. Take out Pinot Gris and put on Roussan. There's, I bet you, sommeliers listening to this are very happy you did that, or some are. Yeah, because I, I, Roussan. I just got to go with with my own like co- standpoint. complete random <laughs> love of Roussan. I know some people who fight to the death about Roussan being a really important grape and a really delicious grape. And I happen to really like it a lot. I think it needs age often yeah. for me to yeah. truly appreciate it. Um, it's a pain in the ass to grow. It's, it's, it's complicated, but I, hard to I sell. don't know. I just, yeah, or just, I mean, nobody knows what it is, but, um, <laughs> but you have, you have, you know, great versions. I, I always love the coupe res, res, uh, reserve Roussans that, that, uh, uh, Bob Lindquist made. They aged gorgeously. Um, so, Oh, yeah, the hell with it. Broussan, you're right. in. Pin agree. Life's hard. So the only the only original grape from the from the noble grapes list that was axed is Merlot. And I would like to hold a small funeral for Merlot right now. Our reds are Cabernet, Syrah, Pinot Noir, Nebbiolo, Tempranillo, and Grenache. That's pretty good. I can I live like with it. that. That's good. I live with that. All yeah. right. Our whites are Sauve Blanc, Chardonnay, Riesling, Chenin, Roussan, and Gruner Veltliner. Look at that. Gets a little wacky at the end, but I like it. It's, um, it's a little if, wacky. If, if I had to, like, if I had to, res, like, restrict my cellar to only those varieties, and with the amount of life I have left, I'd be okay. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> was it like six years or something? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm kind of, actually, that's, you know, <laughs> d- 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 probably hit by a bus tomorrow, or or actually mowed over by Pinot Gris producers. But <laughs> we've redone the noble grapes. I apologize to Jolly Old England and everybody and all the work you've done. Uh, it's this new. It. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for making it to the end of this podcast. Ray Isle. Uh, <laughs> Ray, is there anything anything you want to plug? You got uh, any albums coming out or anything? No, no albums coming out. Um, yeah, you can find me in Food and Wine all the time. That's it's, <laughs> that's pretty good. Food and Wine magazine. I don't know if you go to the grocery store, but you're going to find it at the checkout. It's a good impulse buy for all of you. You can and, follow uh, me on Instagram. That's always good. Yep. Ray Isle. That's good, know, too. At Ray Isle. Ray, it's a it's a true pleasure to have you on. I love uh, I love goofing off with you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This is a total pleasure, Jason. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, bud. This episode of the Som TV podcast is brought to you by Cuve Collective, the world's first wine and NFT company, working with the greatest wineries of California. Here's a message from their NFT releasing this week. This is Dave Moore, and I'm the general manager of Sug Winery in Sonoma Valley. We've partnered with Cuvée Collective to introduce our first wine NFT collection, which gives you the first ever opportunity to acquire wines from our exclusive and private seller, library wines, large format and one of a kind. These wines aren't available to the public and don't exist anywhere else in the marketplace. We look forward to welcoming you soon to Suge Winery in Sonoma, California. For everybody who made it through uh, to the end of that podcast, I want you to at Ray Isle. Don't, don't at me with your mad things. I'm sorry, okay? The general counsel for Merlot or you people who are like massive, crazy fans of Petit Verdot, listen, 
Ray has the answers. He's on Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> go to him and yell. Be mad at be mad at him. Uh, and don't forget, go to somtv.com and uh, please, if you love this podcast, as I always say, please leave us a great review. It matters so much to us. And tell your friends, tell everybody we're here. We love more people than just my mother listening all the way to the end of this. It means a lot to us. Everybody, please be safe and uh, we will talk soon. Thank you.